the crosshead pins are a really simple turning exercise. So rather than go through this step by step, I'll run the video in the background and explain a little bit about how I approach making these parts. I do of course start with Don's drawings, but as I don't work in Imperial, I do need to convert all the dimensions into metric. And for a part as simple as this, I would normally print off the relevant part of the drawing and mark up the metric equivalents for each of these dimensions. For some of the simpler and smaller parts, I would just redraw them on my whiteboard. For more complex parts, I would redraw the individual part using a CAD package. And for that, I use a freeware package called LibraCAD. However, as I progress through the build, I also need to consider the parts I've already made, as not only will I have already converted some of those dimensions from Imperial to metric, but I may have actually deviated quite a bit from the design as well. A good example being on this pin here, the half inch diameter on the left hand side, I've actually drilled the hole 12 millimeters in the crosshead. So for these pins, I have created a design in LibraCAD, which takes into account what I've made so far. And that's what you can see on the screen now. There are risks with this approach. The first and obvious one is that I could just make a mistake when I do that conversion from Imperial to metric. The other being the accumulative error of all those very small changes as I convert from an Imperial measurement to a metric one. For example, 38B 9.525 millimeters, I would go with 9.5 or 9.52 millimeters. All those 0.025s can add up and lead to problems later on. And this comes back to making parts as I progress through the build against parts I've already made rather than adhering strictly to Don's drawings. As well as using LibraCAD and of course my whiteboard, you will have noticed that I also build some 3D models of the parts I'm making. For these I'm using Fusion 360 and in all fairness this is more of a bit of fun and to add a bit of glitz to the videos rather than me using it as a serious engineering tool. What I'm showing here of course is the drop arm of which I need to make two, one to fit to each of the cross heads. To make these I first turn the round section, again a really simple exercise in the lathe albeit working with some very small dimensions. The arm part is just an exercise in cutting, filing, milling and drilling. And after a good clean with some acetone, I bring the parts together using Loctite 648. Apologies, but I didn't lock the focus on the camera, so it's all over the place. I did find making these parts was quite enjoyable and I do like that they are starting to add some real detail to the locomotive. And I do hope that providing some insights into my approach has been useful. If so, do let me know in the comments down below, please. And likewise, if not, in the next video, I will spend a bit of time talking about errors on the drawings because I am starting to run into a few of these now. As always, I'll wrap up the video with a couple of pictures and say thanks for watching.